Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Breaker, and welcome to the show, y'all. Look here. She knows what happened, right? She don't know how it happened, but she knows what happens. And she waits until they leave the house. And she goes downstairs crying to tell her mother what she had just been told. And when she's telling her mother what had, she had just been told, her mother tells her that she knows that this is a setup. She don't know what to do. She don't know how to help him because this boy's father is willing to testify that he saw him there, right? And with witnesses, it's going to be hard. You got the clerk and you got a witness that said it was him. They got the car. They got his clothes. Even though he got a host of witnesses somewhere else to say it wasn't him. They don't know how to explain it. The DA is wondering what's really going on because he has these questions, but on the one hand, it looks like he's got a case open and shut, and then on the other hand, it's like, how can this be? Why would all of these people that don't know him say he was at this restaurant? He has a stellar reputation in the community. He's never been in any trouble. Why would they do this? Why would they do this? You know? As an adult, he's never been in any trouble. So now, it's a lot of questions in the air. So that next morning, they go down to the bond here and they tell him what they had just been told. They tell the lawyer anyway what they had just been told and they try to figure out what's going on. But in the meantime, in between time, they want to try to get him out on bond. And when he goes in front of the judge, the, the, his lawyer makes the case that, look, he has a stellar reputation, never been in any trouble as an adult. You know what I'm saying? Could, they be rele could he be released on his own recognizance? The, the DA was like, absolutely not. This is a violent charge. We're asking for a $100,000 bond, sir, and that would mean $10,000 has to be paid to the bondsman. The, ju the judge agrees, and they make the bond. And in a couple of hours, they process him out, and he's going home. And... When they get to the house, the lawyer pulls up and they have a discussion and that's when it all comes out. Terrence is upset and angry and he wants to do something about it, but he knows he can't. The lawyer tell him, chill, I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to handle this. So the lawyer goes down and he talks to the district attorney and he tells the district attorney everything that he had just been told. Everything. And the DA says it sounds good, but we can't prove it. He said, we need some proof that this happened. We need some proof that this happened. How do you get proof? You got to get them to talking. You got to get them to talking. They already like to talk, but now they might be a little bit more cautious, right? They might be a little bit more cautious. So they think that their best option to get them to talk it's Cheryl. The boyfriend is the weakest link. He's the one that'll run his mouth. That's what the DA thinks. So they arrange for a meeting the next day. And Terrence can't come down. They don't want anybody to see him coming down to the DA's office. So they decide to meet at the lawyer's office and the DA sends one of his representatives and he's on the phone the whole time listening to the whole conversation and the DA tells him, said, look, you want to help your father, your stepfather, you're going to have to wear a wire. And she's totally against it after they explain what's going on because she's afraid for her life. She's afraid of what they might do if they find her wearing a wire. But the DA tells him, this is the only thing that I know we can do to get the evidence that we need to free him. Other than that, we have to proceed. 
And the lawyer is angry and upset. He says, you don't believe this story yourself, but you're going to pursue it. He said, I got an open and shut case. I got two witnesses that say he did it. And I, and then the lawyer hits back and said, I got a restaurant full of people that says he didn't. And he said, we'll have to let a jury decide then if we can't figure this out. He said, I have no problem taking this case to the jury. So Cheryl is sitting there. Everybody's yelling back and forth. And she says, I'll do it. I'll do it. And she looks over at her mother and her mother's crying because she don't want to put her through this. She knows that this could trigger her. This could set her growth back in ways that she may not ever be able to recover. She's been through enough. She's been through enough. It's time for her to be able to live her own life. She's got a decision to make, y'all. She listens and does what her boyfriend wants her to do. Or she saves her stepfather. She decides to save her stepfather. This is the only man since her father that has shown her that he cares about her in the right way. In the right way. Keep in mind, she still don't know how dirty her father was. She still don't know that her father tried to sell her to pay a drug debt. In her mind, her father's still a good man. And now Terrence is taking his place. And he's a good man for real. And she's willing to do this for him because she wants her mama to be happy. She wants to be happy. So she tells him that she's a, she'll do it they make the arrangements. They tell her that this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to get him to talk him. And once he tells you that he did it, she, they told her that they would rush in and put him under arrest and the charges would be dropped against Terrence. She tried to figure what kind of conversation do I have to get him to talk. She stayed up all night trying to figure out what to get him to say and how to get him to say it. And the only thing that she can think of, y'all, was she has to tease him. She told him her mom what she what her plans when her mom was telling her, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Because it was too risky. She had been used and abused and 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 tossed up in ways that nobody should be. And now she was put in a position where she could help somebody, but the only thing that she could think of was to be able to get him to talk was sex. And her mom didn't want her to do it. So when she was at home and they were all talking, Terrence told her and said, I got a better idea. I got a better idea. Tell him that you want to run away with him. Tell him that you got some money put up and, he, and I got a lot of money put up and you know where it's at. And you're going to take that money and you and him will just disappear. And you don't have to do any of this. But you need him to be honest with you about everything that happened. You need to clear your mind about what went down. Right? So she thought about it and she didn't think it would work. But she was willing to try it. She was willing to try it. What did she have to lose? Now the DA wanted her to do something else. But she told him that she wanted to try it this way. And if it failed, that they may not get another chance. They may not get another chance. But she was all in. So she met at the district attorney's office. They wired her up. And she told her boyfriend to meet her. Meet her at the park. And it wasn't quite dark yet. And there was people in the park walking and she wanted to meet at the park because she didn't feel safe. She wanted everybody out there. The police were everywhere. All they needed him to do was say that it was him. And they were going to rush him. So as she sat on the park bench and she was talking to him, she told him to look exactly what Terrence had told her to say. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to leave. Just can't we just go? And he said, how? On what? What are we going to leave with? 
and she said, I got some money saved up. And plus, Terrence has got a lot of money saved up at the house. I know where it said I can get it and we can leave. That piqued his curiosity. He was like, well, how much is it? She said, I don't know, but it's enough for us to leave. He said, you find out how much it is and we can leave. And if you want to hear the rest of this story, you're going to have to tune in to the next episode because it's going to get real grimy. It's going to get real grimy, y'all. This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and I say peace, y'all.